flames that destroyed a Brookline apartment building earlier this week, an amazing story of survival is now being told. Nine fires broke out on campuses across the nation over three weeks in January and February 2012. A fire is in the headlines, but then quickly is replaced by other breaking news, and we never hear of the true impact of these fires. This documentary tells of this impact, what happens after the headlines fade, it tells the rest of the story. In January and February 2012, fires broke out on the campuses of the University of Wisconsin at La Crosse, Arizona State University, Portland State University, and Hamden Sydney College, all in on campus student housing. They all provide valuable lessons on what can go right, but also what can go wrong. At the University of Wisconsin at La Crosse, a fire started in the middle of the night in a basement lounge. The fire caused significant damage to the building's infrastructure. Smoke spread throughout the four stories through unprotected openings and pipe chases. The good news is no one was injured in the fire. However, the building was closed down for an entire semester, forcing the university to find new housing for 271 students. If you think this can't happen on your campus, you're naive um, because it can. My room was just off, off of the lobby. It was the first room to the left. Um, so I was sleeping in bed when the fire alarms went off. Started to advance into the room. The conditions in the room were very, very hot, very smoky. Uh, visibility was down to zero. Once I got outside and the doors were open and all the oxygen was like let in, then the smoke started piling up into the lobby and into the stairways, and that's when I realized, okay, something's actually going on. All of the students were very concerned about the fact that there might still be someone in the building. At that point, we didn't know for sure that everybody was out safe, so everybody was really worried about the rest of the people in their community. Having a good evacuation and emergency plan in place comes in very handy if you actually have an emergency. People said, all right, I'm gonna evacuate and I'm gonna relocate, but hey, I've got all kinds of, you know, my books, my computer, my clothing. When can I get back in there to get those things? We are in Drake Hall where we've had the recent fire and uh, not many of us get to see what a fire looks like. Uh, and I thought when I came in and saw this, it was so devastating. It, it really impresses on you the seriousness of being safe when you hear a, a fire alarm. But this is where investigators believe the fire began. And in this couch area, and you can see it is just uh, devastated. And thank God no one was down here when that happened because I, I don't uh, know how they would have got out. But this is why it's so important. When we hear fire alarms in our buildings, we might think, oh, it's just a, an alarm or a drill or whatever, but it can be the real thing. And, and it really has changed the way I think about uh, fire safety. And we wanted people to see that uh, for themselves because this will get cleaned up and life goes back to normal, but it's important to see the devastation. I fully anticipate that we will have students from Drake Hall who will have had academic difficulty and there will be uh, conversations and appeals about probation and things like that. And we'll have to take this into account, you know, what impact this experience had on that student's ability to do uh, the typical academic uh, performance. You pushed it out of the way. I was, you know, reorganizing people to help them get their stuff back in to kind of just cope with how I was feeling and didn't want to really think about the actual reality of what was happening. And then that night, I definitely had a little bit of a mental breakdown of like, oh my gosh, I don't have a place to live, I'm futon hopping. It was really difficult and the week after was definitely hard. I, you know, skipped meals and stuff like that because it was just a very, you, didn't, you don't think something like that, that you, you know, you got out of the building fine, you didn't get burned, none of your friends died or anything, you don't think it's going to have that much of an impact on you, but just the fact that you were homeless and your life, your schedule is completely changed and thrown for a loop. Had there been sprinklers in the dormitory, this would have really been a non-issue. Um, it would have been a, a, what I would have called a, a, a probably a, a more of a routine fire, probably within, I would say, two 
three hours maximum, uh, the students would have been back in the dormitory. And the only thing that would have been shut down would have been just that particular area. There probably would have been little to no damage to the communication system. There would have been little to no disruption in the, in the U UW's mission of providing education experience to their students. Drake Hall reopened six months later after extensive repairs to the electrical system and telecommunications. Vertical pipe chases, which had spread the smoke throughout the building, were repaired and sealed. The building had to be clean and painted because of the smoke damage on all four floors. Unfortunately, an automatic fire sprinkler system was not installed in the building during the six-month renovation. However, the university does plan to add fire sprinklers to all its residence halls over the next few years. There were two fires in residence halls that had automatic fire sprinklers, one at Arizona State University and one at Portland State University in Oregon. At Arizona State University, the fire department found smoke coming from a room on the upper floor of a high-rise residence hall, and just as they opened the door, the sprinkler head activated, controlling the fire which started in a trash can. At Portland State University, the fire department responded to a 10-story residence hall. A trash chute ran the height of the building, and the trash had backed up from the basement to above the second floor. A cigarette was thrown into the chute, setting the trash on fire. Fortunately, an automatic fire sprinkler system put out the blaze. Both of these sprinkler saves were short stories on the news as opposed to the fire at the University of wisconsin La Crosse. They had very little damage and the students were back in their rooms within hours, demonstrating the roles that sprinklers can play in protecting students in residence halls. At Hamden Sydney College in Virginia, some students are housed in college-owned theme houses which are similar to a fraternity. In one such house, students spotted a fire in a couch on the attached porch and thought they had put it out using cups of water. In the middle of the night, the fire broke out again and then spread into the house. All of the students got out, but one student didn't realize his friend had escaped and went back in to find him, crawling on his hands and knees below the smoke. He was severely burned, and the building was totally destroyed. Basically, I woke up with uh, Matt Maloney, the red guy in here. He, woke, he ran upstairs and woke all us up. Apparently, he had woken up first because his roommate woke him up, and they had uh, realized there was a glow coming in. They smelled smoke, and the fire alarms actually had not gone off. So our porch outside was completely up in flames by the time we were awake. So they tried to go put it out, but the flames burst in the the windows and start coming into the house. Um, that was about the time they ran upstairs to wake us up. By the time we got to the stairs, the fire got into the house and the smoke had really gotten thick and we couldn't even see. So there was only one real exit on the back of the house outside of the porch exit, which was complete flames. We couldn't see anything, so we didn't really know what we were running into. We were one down. Uh, it was definitely something I'll never take lightly again, especially concerning my family and everything. Uh, smoke detectors just beeping and annoying me. I'll take the battery out and leave it just actually be mindful of your surroundings. It's a very simple thing you can do that will go a long way. And you never know when some kind of tragedy like this will strike. A number of fires have started in upholstered furniture on porches, and some of these have been fatal fires. The problem is the fire gets a good head start on the porch where there are no smoke detectors or fire sprinklers before it spreads into the building. Now it is growing, cutting off escape paths, spreading smoke. Preventing these types of fires is vitally important, but knowing what to do when they do break out can save lives. Laboratory fires don't often get much attention outside of the university, but they can have a devastating impact when they go wrong. Two fires, one at the University of Maryland in College Park and the other at SUNY in Canton, New York, had dramatically different outcomes. The fire in Maryland was in a high-tech research laboratory that housed a number of highly toxic gases and chemicals. Fortunately, this lab had an automatic fire sprinkler system that controlled the fire. We had a fire on January 26th, I believe, um, in the ceiling of our lab here at University of Maryland, and it was inside our clean room. Now, we're not exactly sure what started the fire. Fortunately, no one was injured in the actual fire, so 
two students were in the lab at the time. They called 911 and got the firemen here uh, as soon as possible. So the damage was really mitigated by the quick response of the firemen and the quick discharge of the sprinkler system. If the sprinkler system hadn't gone off, the damage may have been much more severe and the fire could have spread and either destroyed the lab or destroyed the entire building. So we're actually very, very lucky that it was somewhat contained and that the damage was minimal. Now, if the fire had been much worse and our tool had actually burned down and some of the steel had melted, then these chemicals would have been released into the environment and this could have been incredibly dangerous. And our lab is adjacent to three other labs, all of which are still in full working order. There was no damage there. Um, so business can continue as usual in these other labs. Fire started in a fan in the ceiling up here uh, in our filtration system in the clean room. So the fan caught on fire and then the air filter up here caught on fire, which lit this whole ceiling panel on fire. Now that discharged the sprinklers. One sprinkler is right here and one sprinkler is over there. These are the only two sprinklers in the building that went off above this ALD system and another ALD system, which was right underneath this fire, um, which we've removed from the lab now. So we had the hazmat team came in and tested the water and everything that was in the lab. And we were allowed back in about three hours after the fire when they declared it safe. So we got to come in and start cleaning up right away three hours after the fire happened, which we think helped us save quite a bit of equipment um, and quite a bit of our electronics and, and things that we had in the lab. A fire broke out in a chemistry laboratory at SUNY Canton. This lab did not have an automatic fire sprinkler system and the damage was extensive. But that's not the end of the story. Because of the environmental impact caused by the toxic byproducts from the fire, the campus was shut down for an entire week and all the students were sent home while the damage could be assessed and cleaned up. The volunteer fire department had to have firefighters on campus for the entire week. Because of the possibility of contamination, fire trucks, breathing equipment, and turnout gear was bagged, quarantined, and cleaned a major impact on fire department operations. This fire in an unsprinklered chemistry lab had a significant effect upon the mission, continuity of the school, and the community. The most tragic fires in January were the ones that occurred off campus. Boston University students were trapped when a fire broke out in their off-campus house. The fire happened on a cold, snowy Sunday morning, forcing students to jump from windows on all three floors of the building. Life rides on the edge of a dime, and that uh, you can have a, uh, a tragic accident happen that can change your life forever, within minutes. At around 7 a.m., I think it was, uh, we woke up to the sound of the smoke detector. Uh, I thought that we both actually thought that it was just my roommate's alarm at first, so I tried to roll over and go back to sleep like nothing was happening. Uh, when it didn't stop, uh, my girlfriend actually got up and noticed and mentioned to me that there was smoke coming in through my door. And that's when you know I first realized that something was actually going on. My roommate Benji had to jump out of the second floor. Josh jumped out of the third floor. He was the only one who lived up on that floor. I I think the first thing I remember is waking up in a uh, rehab hospital for the first time, looking around and like looking at my feeding tube and looking at my bandit on my neck and just being really mad. Josh was, uh, was hospitalized uh, for about 11 weeks after his accident. Uh, two of them, he was, uh, he was in a coma in the uh, ICU at Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital and then for the remainder of his hospitalization, he was recuperating at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. Um, so one of the first problems was that we had to drop everything in our lives uh, to, to, be at, to be at the bedside. Yeah, I can't see, and I can't speak, I can't walk. Uh, it's like, I don't know, it just, it's just weird, just a weird new existence. My speech is not what it used to be because of my brain injury. I'm not sure if it affected my hearing um, because I think uh, it actually helped my hearing because my sight is really poor right now. I am sure, I am sure that every single parent that I interacted with, parents of college-age students, are a lot more vigilant at this time about 
checking smoke detectors and checking for sprinkler systems and checking for fire escapes and checking for college policies about these sort of things because every single one of them understands that devastating accidents like this can happen very, very quickly. And it's just another risk that you have to add to all the other risks that, that you send with your child off to college. Fire safety is definitely a concern to me now. Uh, I couldn't imagine living in a place without a smoke detector or a sprinkler system or a fire escape. The fire, you know, has really put things into perspective for me. It's not all the things that you have that really are important. Um, you know, everything can always be replaced. It's the, the people who are around you and your family and everyone who comes out to help you when you really need it uh, that really m make the difference. A fire broke out in the basement of a four-story off-campus apartment building where a Suffolk University student lived. The fire spread quickly up a stairwell into apartments on all four floors of the building. I woke up to the fire alarm. Then came the engine sirens. I assumed that we probably would have to be evacuated. Allie Wheeler hurried to the living room. Down the hallway, I couldn't see anything. Um, out the front door, I couldn't see anything. She panicked and called a roommate who was outside. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get out? Her roommate said the rear staircase. I couldn't see anything. Yeah, I didn't put my glasses on. I just basically tried running. A second roommate tried to find her. He tried to come up and rescue me, but he made it to level two and couldn't make it up past that. Smoke consumed everything. Firefighters raced to knock down the flames. Wheeler pressed her face to the screen to find oxygen. I passed out. I woke up, you know, on the stairs, on my face. She grabbed her cell phone and called her roommate again. And all of a sudden I heard a fireman um, climbing the stairs yelling. And what I was, was he like, yelling? Oh my, like, hello, hello. And I just yelled out, hi, help me, I'm here. <laughs> The worst fire was one that happened in Poughkeepsie, New York. Eva Block, Carrie Rose Fitzsimons, and Kevin Johnson were killed in an off-campus fire at Marist College. 9-11 in New York was the most devastating day of my life. Um, I was part of the rescue and recovery down there for a couple of days afterwards. I, I never thought I would see or feel as devastated as, as, as that. I, when, when I found out that Kerry was gone, that this is my personal 9-11 right now. I know Marianne and I have to be strong because we have two other children. We'll never have a normal life. People say, well, there's, you know, there's, you have to reinvent yourself. I don't know how we're gonna do that. I really don't. Uh, li life will never be the same. It just won't be the same. You go on, you go through the motions every day. It's just, it's just extremely difficult. Extremely difficult. Carrie Rose was awesome. Good days, a good day I guess would be a day that we didn't cry. We haven't had a good day yet. Just be extremely careful. Uh, where your children live. Make sure every possible fire safety device that could be installed in the house is there. Um, and just tell your kids. Make them so aware of the, the dangers that could happen to them. You know what Matt, Kerry's mistake was? She went to bed that night. That was her only mistake. She, 